Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Loud, and I am your host, Michael Voss, Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm happy to be here with you today, January 20th of 2022, to speak with you about the anniversary, the one year of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in the White House. It's an amazing time and quite an interesting bit of history to look back on. And in fact, that's exactly what Joe Biden did yesterday in a speech. And today, we will take a speed round through the first minutes of the conversation that Joe Biden had with the public to look at any misstatements, any revisions of the past to try and get some clarity on where America is as opposed to where we're being told we should think it is. If this is the first time that you are seeing our channel, we welcome you and we thank you for being part of our audience. We do long-form political commentary. And every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do a live stream with you. We reach out on all social media that the internet overlords will allow to hear your voices in your chats, in your tweets, and even in phone calls from anywhere in the world to hear what you have to say about the issues that affect us all. Because we believe in the First Amendment. We believe in your right to be able to speak. It's not just an American value, it's a value for everyone. And we hope that every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you will join us in our live stream to tell us what you think about the issues that are affecting us all. We're going to take a look at the one year of the Biden-Harris administration. We're going to look back in time by the words of Joe Biden himself to consider what has happened. This is based on his conversation January 19th and his revisioning of the past. And we can understand why he might want to do that. You see, Joe Biden, since he's taken office, has had a very big reversal of fortune. According to Real Clear Politics, he is currently at 53% disapproval. Now that's versus back on January 27th, he had an approval of 55.5%. So he has done a flip-flop, a complete reversal in the eyes of the American people. He is not doing a good job. But yet, Joe Biden decided that he wanted to tell everyone that he is great and that everything that is happening is wonderful to give a very positive spin to what is a failed administration. Failed in Congress, failed internationally, and failed domestically. But don't take our word for it. Let's go through the revision of America and history as presented by Joe Biden. Now, we're going to look at his words, January 19th, as recorded by C-SPAN. Let's just listen to what he has to say. Hello, folks. Thanks for being here. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Tomorrow will mark uh, one year since I took office. Well, so far, he's doing pretty good. That's honest. It's been a year of challenges, but it's also been a year of enormous progress. That's a question. That truly depends on what do you call progress, and progress for whom? We went from 2 million people being vaccinated at the moment I was sworn in to 210 million Americans being fully vaccinated today. We created 6 million new jobs. And already we have to stop to check on this revisioning of America. Because it's not really 6 million jobs, now is it? In fact, if we're looking at the data from the St. Louis Fed, which is the government, and what we can see is looking from 2019, January of 2019, until January of 2021, the United States hasn't created any jobs. In fact, all we've done is try and recapture the jobs we've had before. We can see that the United States, as of January 2020, had a 3.5% unemployment rate, which then went to and stayed at 3.5% as the pandemic took over. And we wound up shutting down virtually every business, every, every industry in not only the United States, but around the world, which led to 
a unemployment rate at its peak of 14.7%. Since that time, and predominantly over the end of 2020, most of those jobs have been recovered. We went from 14.7% to 6.4%. That's the reality. We didn't create new jobs. We recovered the jobs we already had. America, to create new jobs, would actually have to go back and have more jobs. We would have to have an unemployment rate somewhere around 3.4, maybe 3% to actually create jobs that we haven't done. So automatically, Joe Biden is misrepresenting the facts when he says 6 million, 6 point, uh, 6 million jobs have been created. Let's hear what else he has to say. More jobs in one year than any time before. Again, not true. Because these aren't created jobs, these are people returning to their jobs. So he's wrong. Unemployment dropped, the unemployment rate dropped to 3.9%. Child poverty dropped by nearly 40%, the biggest drop ever in American history. Again, what increased child poverty? The fact that we had 14.7% of Americans not working because of the lockdowns of COVID and the prevention of the restart of business. That's a fact. Let's go on. New business applications grew by 30%, the biggest increase ever. And for the first time in a long time, this country's working people actually got a raise. So he says, Americans, we got a raise. Everyone had a raise. It was great. America is doing so much better. Except that's not really true. Because according to CNN itself, the major news media, inflation removed all of America's pay raises. The money you received from the government wiped out. The raise you got at your job wiped out. Inflation, which is at the highest level it's been in 40 years, wiped all of that out. So even if you got a raise, and not everyone did, you are paying more, and you have less. So Joe Biden really didn't have a success there, though he's not completely wrong. Let's continue. Cut health insurance premiums for millions of American families, and we just made surprise medical bills illegal in this country. You know those bills you get that you don't expect to turn two to 5000 be dollars from the hospital beyond Co what you thought you were going to have to owe because of the consultation you weren't told was going to cost that much? No more. They're now illegal. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan and other actions we've taken, we've seen record job creation, record economic growth in the past year. Again, he's restating what he just stated, that we have record job growth, which is incorrect, and we have record income, which is incorrect. Inflation and recovering the jobs that we already lost. So he's just repeating himself here. Now, thanks to the bipartisan infrastructure bill, we're about to make a record investment in rebuilding America to take us to be the number one best infrastructure in the world. Well, that's something we've heard before. Matter of fact, that was said by President Barack Obama, that all we have to do is get the shovel-ready jobs done. We put in $814 billion. We looked out alternative energy sources. And the goal was to bring America into a better infrastructure. And it failed. Miserably. But sure, that's a promise. There's lots of promises by many politicians. Well, now we're way below that. We'll be creating better jobs for millions of people, modernizing our roads, our bridges, our highways, our ports, our airports. Everything from making clean water, lead, removing lead pipes that every American, turn on, every American can turn on a faucet and drink clean water. Urban and rural and suburban communities. It's going to make affordable high-speed internet available to every American in urban, rural, and suburban areas. We've never done that before. No. But now we are. No, we've never done that before. We were promised that many times. President Obama ran on both times that he ran for president, that he was going to fix the environment, that he was going to fix the infrastructure. 
build, build back better is kind of the same thing as the shovel ready jobs. And yet that was a failure, as we've seen also under the first year with the Biden administration. We're in the process of getting that done. Still, for all this progress, I know there's a lot of frustration and fatigue in this country. And we know why. COVID-19. No. <laughs> no. Let's get this straight. The fatigue, the frustration in America, yes, there is some from COVID, but let's remember, it's also about crime. It's the fact that crime is at all-time highs. Twelve of the major cities in the United States have hit all-time all homicide rep records. This is from ABC's News on December 8th of 2021. We have a problem with crime. We have a problem with defunding the police or reallocating police funds or revisioning our criminal justice system. We have a problem in America that is causing a great deal of frustration, anxiety, and fear in Americans, and it's called crime. Not COVID, crime. Although you can say that the major news media have done a great deal of damage in putting fear into the American citizens to make them think that they are going to die from a pandemic that has a 97% survival rate. In fact, the most recent variant of that pandemic has an even higher survival rate because as we learned from South Africa, where it was first found, it is less deadly than the original variant. So you are more likely to survive than the 97% from the original variant. But yet, we want to hear from Joe Biden that your fatigue, your frustration is because of the pandemic instead of crime. Well, perhaps the fatigue he's speaking about is hearing from CNN, ABC, MSNBC, and the White House, and every Democrat telling us that COVID is the worst thing. It is the most deadly thing you can face. Even as homicide rates go up in our cities, and that has nothing to do with it. Well, let's see what else there is. Omicron has, has, has now been challenging us in a way that uh, it's the new enemy. But while it's caused for concern, it's not cause for panic. We've been doing everything we can, learning and adapting as fast as we can, and preparing for a future beyond the pandemic. Perhaps he's talking about the way that we've flip-flopped on the regulations. Two masks, one mask, one shot, four shots. We're constantly changing. And we're constantly hearing, sometimes in a week's span of time, a difference in, in the regulations that we're hearing from Dr. Fauci and the CDC and the administration, even as it violates laws and regulations that the Supreme Court is shutting down. But that could be just understanding that. Let's go on. All I know that after almost two years of physical, emotional, and psychological weight of this pandemic, and it has an impact it's had on everyone, for many of us, it's been too much to bear. We're in a very different place now. We have the tool, vaccines, booster, mask, test, pills. To really? We have all of these things to take care of it? Because weren't we told that all we had to do was hit herd immunity. We were told first that we have to have 15 days to lower the curve. And then we were told we needed to just lock down just for a month so that we could lower the curve. And then that morphed into, well, then we just need to hit herd immunity, which was 60% of the population. And then that number was changed to 70% of the population. We just need to hit herd immunity, except the numbers keep changing. The, the targets keep changing. And everyone's confused. Why? Because the science didn't change, but the interpretation of the science certainly has. So I'm not sure that Joe Biden knows what he's talking about here. Pills to save lives and keep businesses and schools open. 75% adults are fully vaccinated. We've gone from 90 million adults with no shots in arms last summer 
and down to 35 million with no shots as of today. And we're adding about 9 million more vaccinations each week. We're going to stick with our vaccination efforts because vaccinations work. So get vaccinated, please, and get your booster. And if you do get vaccinated, remember, you still can get COVID. You can still get the pandemic. And you can still transfer the pandemic. And the vaccines are limited in their efficacy. That is a fact. These are documented. This is science. So go ahead. And we're not telling you not to, but please speak to your, medi- your medical professionals about your personal individual health care. Like if you have cancer or you have diabetes or you're pregnant, speak to them about what might be best for you. And even if you don't have any of those things, keep in mind that you can still get the pandemic. The medications that are being offered do absolutely nothing. And in fact, the treatment that you're going to have is self-care. You're going to get the same treatment if you do get the pandemic, whether you have the vaccine or not. It's stay at home, take uh, ibuprofen, drink water, and get plenty of rest. Whether you have the vaccine or not, because you can't get monoclonal antibodies, something that has been shown to be effective because they're no longer available for you. Ivermectin is no longer available for you because of the Biden administration telling people not to take those things. Let's see what else Joe has to say. And get your booster. Look, we're also increasing testing. Should we have done more testing earlier? Yes. But we're doing more now. We've gone from zero at-home tests a year ago to 375 million tests on the market in just this month. If you buy a test at a store, your insurance will reimburse you. And those tests will take up to 12 days to get to your home. In addition, we're spending $137 million to the government, to companies in Germany to build more tests so that you know that you will always have a test for the next four years. That's right. The factory that we are building in Germany to help the German economy and their unemployment rate in Germany with $137 billion of your tax dollars, well, that's to make sure that in the future, this will never end. It's already been planned out. Let's continue. On top of that, we're making 1 billion, 1 billion at-home tests available for you to order and be delivered to your home for free. Just visit covidtest.gov to know how to get that free test kit to your home. In addition, there are 20,000 sites where you can get tested in person for free now. And now we have more treatments that people can, uh, that for people to keep people out of the hospital than any other point in the pandemic, including life-saving antiviral pills. Again, he's talking about treatments that we can have, except they're not available. The treatments aren't there. They've stopped that because people are looking for actual treatments. And the actual treatments that you're being told, initially from most medicines and most doctors, and this is from the CDC, is to take ibuprofen and to drink water and get rest. Same thing as if you stay home. So I'm not sure what treatment he's thinking of since monoclonal antibodies aren't the thing that's being suggested. And ivermectin is not being recommended. Really, he's just saying take the booster shots and that's it. And, you know, take your risk. We purchased 20 million of these new Pfizer pills, more than any country in the world. And the bottom line on COVID-19 is that we're in a better place than we've been and have been thus far, clearly better than a year ago. We're not going to back, we're not going back to lock. We would hope. Although many countries already have, so that leaves that specter here. Just think of what's happened in New Zealand, Australia, yeah, Italy, 
there are many things that may yet still happen. We're not going back to closing schools. Schools should stay open. Because they should stay open. We agree. Except Chicago and many teachers unions across this nation don't agree. They're actually trying to close schools. In fact, most recently, the Chicago Teachers Union did close schools until they got a contract agreement. Uh, they've made it because they had a tense standoff and had closed schools. So it's actually the supporters of the Democratic Party, supporters of Joe Biden, the Teachers Union, that are actually trying to keep schools closed, even as he says we should keep them open. So something doesn't quite connect there, but let's go on. Because the American Rescue Plan. We provided the states $130 billion, $130 billion to keep our students and educators safe and schools open. Funding for ventilation systems in school, social distancing, hygiene for classrooms and the school buses. In addition, we've added another $10 billion for COVID-19 tests to be able to be administered at schools. Again, that's also $137 billion going to Germany, excuse me, $137 million going to Germany so that in the future we will maintain the same fear that we have today. Let's go on. And many states and school districts have spent this money very well. Unfortunately, some haven't. I encourage the states and school districts that use the funding to protect our children, keep our schools open, use it. The COVID-19 is not going to give up and accept things uh, you know, it's, it's just it's, it's not going to go away immediately. But I'm not going to give up. Well, actually, in England, they aren't giving up either. They're, stop, they're just stopping the fear. In fact, we know that Boris Johnson has already stated that all of the restrictions on the public in the United Kingdom will end. No more mask mandates. No more passports for vaccines and vaccine mandate for jobs that's gone he's getting rid of all of that in fact looking at the bbc speaking about this just 16 hours ago boris johnson mentioned this should not be seen as the finish line because the virus and the future variants cannot be eradicated instead we must learn to live with covid in the same way we live with the flu so England is going forward. COVID is in our past or in the past of the United Kingdom. It will be treated as the flu, but not in the United States, not with Joe Biden, because, well, I'm not really sure why. Let's go on. And accept things as they are now. Some people may call what's happening now the new normal. I call it a job not yet finished. What is the finish line? Exactly where does the finish line come from? And that's the real question we want to ask. Where is this ending? We're going to be getting more COVID tests created from other nations sent to the United States for the next, what, three, four, five years? We've sent, spent millions of dollars on that already. We have no end in sight. We see that even as Joe Biden is speaking right now, the Supreme Court has shot down his requirements of mandated vaccinations for every business in the United States, and yet he's continuing to trumpet that idea. We've seen this devastate our economy, and yet he's continuing to move forward with that. We've been told herd immunity was at 60%, then 70, 75. 80, 85. Where is that number? We've seen that people have taken the medications and still get the pandemic. Sometimes more than once. Where is the end? We've seen that the virus is becoming less and less deadly, but yet the reaction is exactly the same. The treatment is exactly the same. Americans are suffering from inflation, which is continuing to grow because we are spending at rates astronomical versus any other time in American history. 
and it is devaluing the dollar. And everyone who's gone to the store knows it. We've heard Joe Biden say, well, the supply lines have been fixed, and yet we are being told by supermarkets across the nation that at any moment, they could be 15% of their goods could be missing from shelves, and shelves are empty. America has 5 million less manufacturing jobs today than we did in 2000. And we have more empty shelves than we've ever had before. The reality is that Joe Biden is trying to revision the past. He is trying to remake history. He is trying to put a positive spin on what isn't positive. And that's why Joe Biden has an approval rating that is sinking. We have no reason to believe that anything that Joe Biden has offered America will be a benefit. And we haven't even talked about the international policy, the failure in Afghanistan, the fact that Russia is laughing in the face of America, that Joe Biden is admitting, admitting that Russia will take over more of the Ukraine. And therefore, why would they stop? That North Korea is laughing in the face of the United States and firing off more hypersonic missiles, even as Joe Biden says, uh, requests that they stop. That Iran is continuing to move forward with its nuclear ambitions. Joe Biden in the last year has revisioned everything except reality. He has a cheerful way of looking at things, possibly because he doesn't remember what actually has happened. But perhaps you think we've misunderstood. Maybe you think that our sources from around the world are incorrect. Perhaps you believe Joe Biden in his revisioning of the past. I'm sure if we look further, we'd find even more flaws. But we look forward to hearing what you think. Do you think Joe Biden's look back at the past year has been correct? Do you believe that America is in a wonderful state? that the economy is in a good position, that you can feel more secure in your homes and the nation should feel more secure as well. Do you believe that? Or do you believe that Joe Biden has failed? We look forward to hearing your comments.